This video is brought to you by Ultium 365. In today's episode, we are going to make a temperature and humidity monitoring system using the most popular DHT21 temperature and humidity sensor and the I2C supported SSD1306 or LED display module. Instead of using the DHT21 sensor, you can also use the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. If you haven't purchased a temperature and humidity sensor yet, then I would recommend that you buy the DHT21 sensor because it's fast and accurate compared to the DHT11 sensor. Normally, I use the same Adafruit GFX.h and Adafruit SSD1306.h libraries when I use the SSD1306 or LED display module with the Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano, ESP32 and ESP8266, etc. But in the case of AD1085, these libraries didn't work. So later in this video, I will explain which libraries to download and how to use them. So without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the DHT21 temperature and humidity sensor to the 5 volt and ground pins on the AT1085 microcontroller. Pin 4 on the AT1085 is the ground while pin 8 is the VCC. Connect the data wire of the DHT21 sensor to pin 6 which is the digital pin D1 as per the AT1085 pinout diagram. Similarly, connect the VCC and ground pins of the I2C supported SSD1306 or LED display module to the 5 volt and ground pins on the AT1085 microcontroller. Connect the SCL and SDA pins of the OLED display module to the pins 7 and 5 on the AT1085 microcontroller. Pin 7 is the SCL and pin 5 is the SDA as you can see in the AT1085 pinout diagram. You can use AAA batteries to power up your project or you can use any 5 volt regulated power supply. In my case, I'm using my designed 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. As you can see, I have connected the 5 volt and ground wires to the VCC and ground pins on the AT1085 microcontroller. I have a very detailed video on how to design a 5 volt and 3 amps power supply in Ultium Designer. So that's all about the connections. And if still you have got any confusion, then you can follow this circuit diagram. You can download this circuit diagram from our website electronicclinic.com. Now let's go ahead and install the required libraries. Ultim 365 lets you invite users to your workspace so everyone can collaborate on projects and access the latest design revisions. To invite a user to the workspace, click the name of the workspace and select my Ultium 365 to open the workspace configuration in your browser. On the left side, select workspace members. Click the invite workspace members button to start the invitation process. To invite a user, enter their email address in the aid members field. You can invite multiple users at the same time. Finally, you can add a note that users will see in the invitation after entering all the necessary data Click the invite button to complete the process. Specify the administrator role for the invited user. Once a new team member accepts the invitation, they will have defined access to the workspace and can collaborate with other members. I have added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopart, the world's fastest component search engine. Now let's get back to our project. Make sure you have the latest version of the Arduino IDE installed on your computer or laptop. Anyway, we are going to install three libraries, one for the DHT21 and the other two libraries for the SSD1306 or LED display module. For this, go to the sketch menu, then to include library and click on the manage libraries. Search for the DHT. As you can see, I have already installed this library. And this is the same library I have been using with Arduino Uno and Arduino Nano. And it's also compatible with the 8085 microcontroller. 
Next we are going to install the Tiny YRM library. This is the one I am going to install. The Tiny YRM library has been installed and next we are going to install the Tiny 4K OLED library. This is the library that we need to install and as you can see this library is created for an AT Tiny 85 to use an I2C supported SSD 1306 OLED display module. So let's go ahead and install this library. The library has been installed. I'm also going to install the Tiny OLED fonts library. Although I don't need this library, but is this library has a collection of fonts. So I think I may need this library. All the libraries are installed and now let's take a look at the programming. I have added the required libraries. The DHT21 data wire is connected to the PB1 pin which is the physical pin number 6 or the digital pin 1. This part of the code is to display the thermometer icon on the OLED display module and then the rest of the code is almost the same. You can download this code from our website electronicclinic.com. I have added a link in the description. Now the final step is to upload this program. As you know, the AT1085 has no USB support so we will need to use an Arduino board to upload the program. So next I'm going to explain how to connect your AT1085 with the Arduino Uno. Connect pin 1 of the AT1085 which is also the reset pin to pin 10 of the Arduino which is the SS pin slave select. Connect pin 4 which is the ground pin to the ground pin of the Arduino. Connect pin 5 which is the MOSI pin to pin 11 of the Arduino which is the MOSI master out slave in. Connect pin 6 which is the MISO pin to pin 12 of the Arduino which is the MISO master in slave out. Connect pin 7 which is the SCK pin to pin 13 of the Arduino which is the SCK serial clock. Connect pin 10 of the AT1085 which is the VCC pin to the Arduino 5 volt pin. Finally connect a 10 microfarad decoupling capacitor between the reset and ground pins of the Arduino. Make sure you connect the positive leg of the capacitor with the reset pin and the other leg of the capacitor with the ground. So that's all about the connections. If still you have got any confusions then you can follow this circuit diagram. You can download this from the article available on electronicclinic.com. Connect Arduino Uno with the laptop and upload this program. But first you will need to add the AT1085 microcontroller in the Arduino IDE. The AT1085 microcontroller is not pre-installed in the Arduino IDE and you can confirm this by going to the tools menu and then to board you will see a long list of the Arduino boards but you won't find AT1085 so this means we'll have to manually install the AT1085 as a board in the Arduino IDE. For this go to my website and copy this board manager URL link. Then come back to the Arduino IDE, go to the file menu and then to preferences and paste this link in the additional boards manager URLs. Put a comma if you have added other boards otherwise you can directly paste the board URL link and then click on the OK button. Go to the tools menu then to board and click on the boards manager. Search for the at -tiny. You can see the at is included in this boards package. So let's go ahead and install it. Now to confirm that the at microcontroller is added, go to the tools menu. Then to board and you can see the at microcontrollers. You can see the different variants of the at microcontrollers. So let's go ahead and select the AT1085 controller. Now let's go ahead and upload the program. You can see the program has been uploaded.
everything looks good and now let's power up this project. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.